protection. We had a whole life policy as far as barrier coverage, final expense. But what I'm going to talk about today is a, a, a different kind of client, all right? And what this is called, this is called the equity close on a home. So that is for your elderly couple or your elderly single family that has children, all right? They're either too old and the budget doesn't fit a three, four hundred dollar a month payment, okay? Or they're just not healthy enough to qualify for HMS. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. This is going to be a little bit differently because I'm going to stop in the middle of this and kind of talk to you on my methodology, why I ask some of the questions that I ask. Uh, and, and it's not going to be as smooth because I'm going to stop and kind of talk to you guys about why that I'm doing what I'm doing. Does that make sense? All right, great. So you're going to be Marco or you're going to be Javier today? I'll be Javier. Javier? All right, great. <laughs> so starting off, guys, I get out of my car, all right? I'm looking for everything. Uh, what's outside, what I can use to create a conversation to build that rapport from Jump Street, okay? So that's kind of what I'm trying to do out the gate. I'm looking for anything. I'm walking at home, I'm looking for pictures of grandkids. If it's a, an elderly man that opens the door, I'm looking to see if there's slippers for the wife, if there's pictures of him and his wife, if his wife is still there, she's passed away, getting that dynamic to make sure I'm not getting one leg because I always want a double leg appointment. Once I get it home, I do not sit at the couch. If you sit at the couch, you are going to lose, all right? I don't even let that be an option. They start, a lot of times, they start guiding me towards the couch. and say, hey, let's go sit over here at the table. I got some stuff that I'm gonna have to put on the table right out for you. And I just sit down without asking, all right? And I sit at the head of the table, and I think Eric said, it never position, if it is a two-leg appointment, never position the husband here and the wife here because you're like, hey, what do you think? So what do you think? Yeah, so try to position them side by side and, and don't sit across from them because that's creating a barrier. You want to be kind of here where you're unifying them because you're trying to protect your family in the toughest times of their life, all right? So we've gone through that. I found my common ground. We've kind of, you know, developed a bond, made them like me a little bit. Now I'm going to go into kind of what did we talk about in the end home. What's your name? Javier. Javier, all right. <laughs> So Javier, and a lot of people ask, why did you fill out the form today, okay? That's one of the first questions people ask. For me, I've gotten a few, a few kind of hairy responses I didn't really like for that. So I pivoted, and the question I asked now is, so Javier, let me ask you, who is it that you're looking to protect today for your family? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking to protect myself, but it's really for, I guess, my son. Okay, because no one's going to say there's no bad response to that. They can't say, well, I just thought about it and the form came in. There's no, what are they going to say? I don't want to protect my children. I don't want to protect my wife. I don't want to protect my husband. So I say, hey, who do you want to protect today? So, all right, so your son, talk to me a little bit about that. How old is he? Yeah, he's 24. Okay. Yeah, he lives in South Florida. Okay. Uh, he's in pharmacy school, just finishing up. So he's going to school. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you have a job or anything? Uh, he's working part time, but that's not serious. Well, that's awesome. How awesome is that? that in this economic state we're in right now, you and your son, he's able to go to school and to better himself and to you know, better serve the community. So kudos to you for raising a fantastic job. You know, a lot of darkness. Very, very grateful. Thank you. So let me tell you a little bit, Marco, who I am. All right? My name is Tyler. Um, local field underwriter. I work with the mortgage groups and all the finance companies. I see here that you have Chase Bank. So I work alongside Chase Bank. And anytime they get those requests, the one who fill out mail comes to me. They just send me out to try to put you in the best position possible. <laughs> if anything was to happen, that your family's left holding the bag. And the whole reason that mortgage protection is a thing is because the government saw five, six years ago, there was hundreds of thousands of families every year going into financial ruin, going into homelessness because the dad, the, the husband, the father, the earner passed away. And the family couldn't even afford to keep that home. And they would either be homeless living under a bridge, or they would lose $150,000, $200,000 in equity they have in their home. And that's why that I'm here, is to keep that from happening to you and your family. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's right. Great. And again, you know, this process today is very, very simple. All right? I break it down into three categories. The first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to get your information. And I want to see if I can get you qualified. Because the reality is, these programs, although they're great state regulated, not everyone can qualify for them. 
it's based off of age, health medications, you know, health restrictions, things like that. So we're going to try to find a program that best fits you and your needs. And that's my goal today is to find a program I can qualify you for. The second thing is I want you to be covered today. When I walk out of this house, if you get in a car and an 18-year-old that's driving and texting and driving smashes into the side of you, and your son gets a call and you just passed away and he's never going to see you tomorrow, that at least we got peace of mind for him to know that A, he has a place to live or we can try to create a legacy for him with the equity that you have in this house. And then the last thing I got to do is, is in a budget you can afford. Because if you can't afford this, you're not going to keep it. So you wasted your time, you wasted my time, and you wasted paying for this for three or four months just to cancel and you didn't keep the coverage. Is all that stuff there? Yeah, it, it does. I'm just, I'm still probably in the state of just looking around for quotes, and I'm not sure if I'm really ready to make a decision today, but it does, it does sound accurate. Well, and I get you 100%. You know, I, I get that you're looking for quotes, but good thing that I'm here, okay? I represent 20 different carriers, and we don't even have the power yet to say we're just looking for quotes, because the reality is, we don't even know if you can walk. So, again, we need to go back ask for some of these medical questions, right? See if you qualify, and then we'll get you in the best position possible. Does that make sense? That sounds fair. That sounds fair. All right, great. So at that point, guys, then I go into asking the medical questions. Um, you know, again, he's elderly. What what medication do you take? Yeah, I take uh, the Cinepro for high blood pressure. I take the statin for cholesterol, um, and I also take uh, metformin. Metformin. And metformin is for diabetes. Yeah. Is that under control? It is under control. No insulin. No insulin. Nothing like. Have you ever taken insulin? No, close to it, but no. Close to it. Yeah, never take it. All right, cool. Uh, so guys, and, and what I ask them is, hey, a lot of people say, hey, I'm healthy. And their version of healthy and our version of healthy are two completely different things. I had a guy the other day, he said he was healthy. I'm like, all right, well, have you taken any pills? Oh, well, I do have COPD. All right, great. Not healthy, yeah. Uh, so at this point, right, you get the list of medications, all right? That's whenever that I'm going to go into my pitch with him. I'm going to run the carriers. I'm going to try to find out what direction that I want to go. Now, I'm going to go into the uh, actual financial inventory part. And the reason I'm doing this with elderly people with equity clothes, a lot of people cannot afford a full HMS coverage, right? So let me ask you, Michael, what is it that you know, that you're making? Yeah, I bring home around like 23, 2400 between Social Security and the pension I get. Okay, so about 2400 Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and as far as your work, $800 a month. And how much is it that you owe in your house? Uh, I owe about $120,000. Sir. And what that I do, guys, at this point, I get my iPad, I go to Zillow, I type in the address, and I show the estimated value of what the house is for. Ooh. And they see me typing here, and I'll write it down, say he owes $120,000. Let's say that he, you know, is worth two hundred thousand bucks. How many years do you have worked in the mortgage? Yeah, I think about twelve. Twelve years. So right now he has eighty thousand equity in his home. So I look at him and I say, I've already forgotten what you're paying. Yes, I'm going back, Marco. All right, Marco. So here's the thing that we have going for us here. The, the beautiful thing is, Marco, is if something happened to you today, your son, James, okay. He has a check for $80,000 in this property. I know he's going to school. You said he works part-time, so I'm assuming he probably couldn't keep up your mortgage payments for you something to have. No. Right? No way. And as far as savings, 401ks, IRAs, what's that? Yeah, not much. Um, really, you know, what I have in the account, which is probably a couple thousand dollars, that's about all I got. All right, so what, what are we talking about? Eight hundred. I know a lot of people. A lot of things I talked today five, six hundred dollars because with COVID and everything. That's and the reason I say that, guys, I don't want to make them feel emasculated about not having money in the bank. Okay, so I'm trying to rationalize that with other families. So a lot of families I talk to, they only have four hundred bucks in the bank. So what are we looking at? Four hundred, five hundred thousand, two thousand. I, I would say between a thousand and fifteen hundred is what I normally have in the bank because I have the IRS and a couple other. So today, you got Ten thousand bucks, thousand yeah. dollars. Right. And as far as whole life coverage, what kind of coverage do you have to cover your burial or anything like that? Yeah, I, I prepaid for a plot, uh, so 
that was a long time ago that my father helped me set that up, but it's not all I got. Okay. Well, and that's very responsible. You make sure you're taking care of that burial for your, for your family. Because the last thing we want to do is leave your son trying to mourn your death, but also trying to figure out financially how he's just going to get through until you ground his dignity. So that's, that was a very smart decision to make. Kudos to you. Uh, so at that point, guys, I know what I'm going to go with, right? He's got burial covered. Uh, so I'm going to go with mortgage coverage as far as protecting it. And how do you do that? You run a whole life policy that's more lenient with help and easier to qualify for and not as expensive, all right? So I get three options when I'm doing equity. I take the amount of their mortgage. Say their mortgage is, in this case, he said it was 800 bucks. I take $800, I multiply that by 12, multiply that by 18, and I multiply that by 24. And I write down three separate options. And then I'm going to go into the pitch. I don't know if I'm out of time, so I've got to be quick. So, Marco, let me talk to you. You know, uh, I'm being real with you. I have your permission to be really honest. Sure. Yeah. Okay, great. So, I, I see your income. I see what you're making. What you have. I think that covering this whole mortgage, even though we could do that for you, that would be a whole other mortgage payment. And, Marco, none of the clients that I sit with do that. All right. What we're going to try to do today, what I propose we do to protect your family, is to put a policy in place that the rates are never going to increase, it's never going to expire, it's going to cover you until you pass away, and it's going to make sure that that $80,000 that you have an equity in your home, something happen to you tomorrow, would be covered for your son. If you pass away in 10 years, it'll be about $140,000 now that your son just gets to preserve that, and he will have that to move forward. So how I propose we do that, okay? We take a whole life policy. And we put that in place, and it's going to protect that. So no matter what happens, your son has time. Because the one thing I'll tell you about life, right? Time is the most valuable asset to have when you don't have it. When time is gone, it doesn't matter. Mm. So my goal is to give your son time to where he's not going straight from the funeral home to the real estate office. Because you have thousand dollars in the bank that's going to cover your mortgage for 30 days the first seven days after you pass if funeral's in three days he's still going to be in shock so you're giving your son as it sits right now he has 30 days to sell this home and that's physically impossible with the market the way it is the way that things are it's just not going to happen so the policy is that we have here here's your three different options the first one what that's going to do is going to pay the mortgage for a year they give your son 12 months to plan process and sell this home and collect the equity. Right? The next one is 18 months, a year and a half. That'll give them a year or six months to grieve and then a year to sell. And then the last one gives them 24 months. Right? That'll give them a year of process and a year to sell if he's doing renovations or anything like that. So here's the three options that we have. Now, which one of these would best fit your budget work? The one year of covering your son 18 months we're covering your son to make sure he's not stressed about this for two years yeah we love option two or three like probably a four option one okay yeah. so looking at the budget that we have here do you feel like that your house is going to sell here uh <clears throat> yeah i mean to me i think that a year should be ample time for him to do what he needs to do all right perfect and then from there i start processing the application now once we agree on the amount Okay, we all know about Americo. Uh, it says that you may qualify for coverage. Okay, once I hit that you may qualify for coverage, that's like my hard close. I say, listen, there's three tiers. You automatically get approved for coverage. You get declined, or you may qualify. So I know that you were taking that bet for me. So it said that you may qualify. Unfortunately, we didn't get that instant approval that we were wanting. That's when I turned it around to show Americo and said you may qualify. We didn't get that instant approval that we were looking for, Mr. Jones, but. And what it is, it's just a medication. It's just a prescription check. It's a machine going boom, 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 boom. One of these are two of these medications flat. So we're not doing it until the end, but that's okay. We're just going to enter your banking information, submit it to the carriers, and let an actual physical underwriter look at this and see if we can get your proof of coverage today. Is that fair? And then people feel like they're possibly not going to get it. And us as humans, we want what we can't have. And that builds that on us. So once we close that, it's going to stick. Because at that point, they think there's a possibility that they may not get covered. And after I hit submit and it says automatically approved, I'll sit there for three or four minutes and talk to them saying they're just looking at it. They're trying to figure out. You know, I, 
I, I, I always tell this, I picture this woman as like a 400 pound woman with cornering glasses and names Gertrude on the other side. She's been back with me today, she's declined three of the clients, so hopefully she'll get you through. <laughs> That's it.